Today we're doing a leather bib for the dash on a uh, motorcycle. We just put back together, airbrushed the uh, sheet metal, and uh, I've got a quick sketch of the bike, the skull that's on the tank of the bike. I got a quick sketch there, and uh, we're gonna be applying this to this leather bib and hand tooling the whole bib and then seal it and it'll become part of the dash of that motorcycle. So uh, hang around with us. This is Iron Blackbird Cycles. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll bring you in just a minute over the top of this and you can see how we put it on the leather. This is not where I usually do my hand tooling for leather. I usually do it in my house, but Today we're doing this for motorcycle stuff, so we brought it into this, brought my tools into the shop. I got everything scattered, but what we have to do to this leather is just wet it down a little bit. And what that does is it'll make the top of this pliable to where I can uh, do some uh, hand tooling on it. <clears throat> and we don't want to put marks on this leather because everything will be done with hand tool. But what I'm gonna do is take this sketch that I made of the, uh, we'll get you a picture of the tank in a minute. And I'm using a really dull pencil. I'm using a really dull pencil to uh, make an impression more or less on this tank bib, not, not marks really just an impression so that we can use uh, get to the next step so all i'm going to do is just kind of trace this and push down hard into that leather what this does is leave an impression when i get done you'll see how the impression works like i said this is just a sketch we'll do most of this probably freehand but it'll allow me a little bit of an outline. <clears throat> Just enough to uh, be able to see what I'm doing. When we start cutting into this leather. Because everything gets cut into. And then we use hand tools to hammer it all in. You want to get into something where you can get rid of some aggression. This would be a good, uh, good thing to start doing. And I'm kind of drawing in some extra stuff that I know will work well for what we're doing. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right there is the uh, main sketch. And, uh, Messed up, didn't get the bottom, didn't get the teeth in there, but this pencil is so dull. I don't have any lead sticking out. I'm just using the wood part of the pencil to make the teeth.
So, let's see if you can see that on. You can see the impressions in the leather. Got a little bit of dark spot there it's from where leather been handled before, but it'll come off when we stain it. Now on to the next step. We get to take this little jewel. This has a razor blade in it, thick razor blade. You lay your finger through here and you can turn this to follow that outline. What this does is cuts the top of the leather, opens it up so that when we come back in with the tools and start hammering in the shapes, this not only gives you a guide to work from, but it, it, it helps that leather lay down so that when we hammer the shapes in and the textures, it'll all be, uh, it'll all be good. This is one of the one of the things that I've taught myself to do over the years of just getting interested in something and uh, watching other people do it, read about it. Uh, I'm self-taught everything. I've never had any training for airbrushing or anything else. It's all self-taught. Uh, just basically getting stuff and working with it until you figure out how to do it. And uh, I think everybody has the uh, ability to do anything they want to do if they want to work hard enough to learn how to do it. I hear so many people say, oh, I wish I could draw like you. Oh, I wish I could airbrush like you. Oh, I wish I could paint. I said, it, that's the issue is, is you can. You just have to take the time to want to learn how to do it. And it is time consuming a lot of stuff. It took me three years to even airbrush anything that I even liked. I airbrushed for three years, throwing stuff in the garbage every every week, you know. Stuff that I just didn't like. It wasn't up to my what I thought looked good. And uh, after teaching myself to airbrush, this whole... Uh, Everything else came easy. Airbrushing was probably the hardest thing I ever had to learn how to do. And uh, everything else, I, I'm, a, I'm a tattoo artist as well. I had tattoo shops and everything else. And uh, after learning to airbrush, teach myself how to airbrush, uh, tattooing and leather work and everything else just became second nature. It's all applied knowledge. As long as you know how to, as long as you figure out one thing, you can just apply the knowledge you learned off that on something else. And here we've got the uh, almost, almost done. We've got to get the bottom, get the teeth and the bottom teeth in. When I say almost done, I mean almost done with this outline.
Yep. Then we'll sign the piece here in a minute. Ryan's got the day off. He's training dogs today. Scooter's here working. Ryan uh, trains dogs for law enforcement and just everyday people as well. And let's see, let's go up here. This is my signature that I'm putting in. Everyone around knows that uh, if I do skulls on anything, there'll be a bullet hole over one of the eyes. And uh, that's what Scooter was just asking me. You gonna put a bullet hole on that? Yeah. This bullet hole will look really cool, really cool hand tooled once I get the shapes and textures in there. So there's our start. It's starting to look like something. And once in a while that leather starts drying, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of water and keep that top pliable. Stay sharp. You have to sharpen it. Yeah, ironically, you, you have you need to sharpen them. If they get dull, you just use a wet wet rock or stone and just sharpen them. But uh, they stay sharp for a really long time, which surprised me. I really expected to have to sharpen one every, every time you do a piece of leather because leather's so tough to work with. But uh, for some reason, whatever whatever these are made out of, and I, I'm assuming it's probably some type of tungsten or something is uh is what it is so uh also we'll be doing a putting a uh the guy's initials in the eyes of this skull this tool right here scaves out the top of the uh leather there you can set the depth of it, however deep you want it. And uh, it'll make a nice outline around the edge of the design. Also, if I was stitching this to something, that's where I would put all the holes to stitch it to something, but this is gonna lay flat on the dash. So, Now we got to set up to do uh, do the hand tooling. So I need something really hard, really flat to put this on while we do the hammer work on it. So give us just a minute to set up for that and we'll be right back. Now this is the part where it can get a little confusing. Like I said, I normally do this at my house uh, in the garage where I got a table set up. The table's got a hard, a piece of oak with a covering on it but we're doing this in the shop today and that is going to be um we make do so we're using a piece of uh i-beam for a hard spot let's see i don't know if you can see that but if you look at that tool it's kind of shaped like a wedge and we're gonna use that to tamp down the leather around the outline so that it makes, makes a deeper impression.
stuff we make the guitar strap. <laughs> oh, I figured I'd be making you a guitar strap for before we're done. Um, so as you can see how that leather tamps down, and once that leather dries, it'll stay that way. And what I'm trying to do, oh, grab me that uh, knife out of there. Yep, right there. Missed a spot. When I get to work on the other side, we'll try to get the camera around where you can see what I'm actually doing. I know it's kind of tough. And I don't want to sacrifice the artwork for... Uh, the sake of being able to film it. Now, how hard are you gauging how you hit it? I'm going to do that wet. Go wet me that. Um, as far as how hard I hit it, I can kind of hear the solidness of the steel behind this. And I'm not hitting it hard enough to uh, break the leather. If that makes any sense. And of course the shape of this that I'm using Depending on my angle I use it is how hard it's gonna move that. Yeah, just wet it down. How hard is it, would it be to actually go through the leather and run your artwork? Well, you could go through the leather and it still really wouldn't ruin the artwork um, unless the leather needed to be like on a, on a uh, bag or something that you didn't want it to go through. And it's just a tap. I'm not like beating this thing to death, you know. And when I get to like this side, I'll tamp the leather the other way, you know, halfway through the, the skull there. I hope y'all can see this. It's kind of tough for me to keep my arm out of the way. That's why I'm kind of doing part of it from over here, so. Try and get a lot of the big stuff done here so that when we get around to the detail work, I'll be using a smaller, same thing this is, but it'll be a smaller one. Well, that leather's drying quick today. Once it starts drying out, it doesn't want to move as well. And I'm doing these teeth from both sides so we get this three-dimensional effect.
there a certain thickness of leather you use to do that? Or will any... Yeah, this, this saddle leather that I'm using is just, it's about a, a little less than a quarter inch thick. You can get different thicknesses. I really like the quarter inch stuff, stuff you would normally use on a saddle. Uh, just for the simple fact, it's a, it's a lot easier to uh, get a good deep impression on it. Now the eyes I'm kind of doing what you would think would be the wrong direction, tamping it down. You would think you want to go in on the eyes, which you do. But uh, I'm going to texture the eyes with another type of tool, which is going to lay them way down into the leather. So we don't want to, we want to get a little bit of shape on the outer eye around the eye socket. The good thing on a skull is, is you don't have to be too careful. No two skulls are the same. And uh, we're getting closer here. The idea is this, I just want to, as I'm going around getting this first part done, I'm just kind of angling the tool. And uh, as I hit it, I just kind of try to move it a little bit. And I'd bet this hammering on this video is going to drive a lot of people nuts. 
How many of you had that tool kit? Uh, these tools were given to me by an old man that did saddle work. A lot of a lot of them are not that old. Some of them are really old. Some of this stuff, you can get this stuff at Hobby Lobby, by the way. I don't know. I don't know if I ought to give them any advertisement because uh, they're definitely not paying for any of this, but. Well. Uh, my best place to tell you to get stuff, and they're a little bit expensive, but you can get anything you want for leather work, and that's a place online called Tandy Leather. Uh, a good source of good leather is, uh, you're going to find that at, uh, shoe cobbler if you got a shoe cobbler anywhere near you they usually have leather like this but uh tandy leather you can order sheets of this stuff um as well as uh all the tools you'll get to see more of the tools like i said i just grabbed this stuff off the off my deal at the house. Can you buy patterns for that for the guys that aren't so artistic? Yeah, I mean, you can trace something and then retrace it onto the leather and then do the same thing. So if you don't have any, let's say, artistic ability, uh, this tool I'm about to use is a, let's see if we can get that to focus, is a texturing tool. They make them bigger and smaller. I've just got a few small ones here. As you can see, I just dropped that, that nose back in there. And when we stain that, that'll get real dark. That'll stay dark. You went me down another, another one of those real good. Let's, here, just run that back there and run it under the water real quick. This type of stuff is, uh, you'll wear your forearm out pretty quick. But uh, you get enthused with it, you get working with it, and you're like, ah, oh, we've got to keep going because this stuff's kind of addicting. Now, what kind of dye do you use? Is a sealer in the dye? No, the, the leather dye we'll be using on this and and I don't have any day. I had to order some because, like I said, we don't do this. I don't do this all the time. I make uh, leather holsters when I'm not building motorcycles. And uh, the uh, this is kind of what you would. 
used to do some shading with. Try to walk around here where you can see what I'm doing. The uh, Like if I want to shade with this, I'm going to start tapping it hard. When I get out towards the edge, I'm going to lay off a little bit. And what that does is give it just a little bit of a gradient. Let's see here. This little tool here, as you can see, has like a little foot on it. And it's gonna allow me to get in between these teeth and work these teeth. As you can see, it's, it's beveling those teeth down under. Plus it'll allow me to turn it real well. And when I'm sitting down and not standing up doing this at the house and I've got this piece glued to the table, it makes it a lot easier to do this. And I'm working both sides of the teeth so that we'll get a little more shape out of them. Those are starting to come out. Work this other eye in.
Oh, we're starting to look like something now. Keep kicking the camera. That's what we look like without skin. That one there makes nice little holes. Not really a hole, but an in indentation. Just giving little texture spots here and there in the bone. And then we're gonna make some, some thin cracks in the, in the leather. Imagine the detail you can get in that. Yep. You can see as we wet it down a little bit. I've got some stains, so you're gonna be able to see this stain when we get done. It'll it'll be a huge difference in what you can see. I'm doing a lot of stuff right now that you you probably can't see on camera, but this tool here is just to like give you an indentation. If we were doing something, say, oh, Trying to just beat down a little bit of this brow so we get kind of a brow line in there. It's kind of like shader. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing is just kind of shading. If I was making a gun holster here, you would see uh, when we got done with this part, we'd actually wrap the gun in plastic, form this around it, put a lot of weight on it, and the next morning when you got up, this would all be dry and hard and it form fitted to the gun. This is more of an artwork piece, so. See if there's one of these, but smooth in that.
probably that much. Find me a R and a W inside this one. Yeah, give me the R and the W, and then there's a handle. That's the bad thing about this is the M's kind of look like Well, I was going to, but I want to sink those eyes in. Uh, dash is going to come to about there. It'll look real nice right here under the chin, RW. As you can see, that makes a nice impression of the R. Big bold lines. What I want to do is I want to line up the W to go right underneath it. So what I do is, is I take this one out, drop it back in the impression, Once it's seated in that impression, I'll take the W. And go right there underneath it. The important thing is not to let that move. You don't want that to bounce back up and move because if you hit it, you'll get a double image of it. So you want to keep pressure on that. And you can put those back in the box. And I think that's gonna look pretty good. I think he's gonna be happy with that. We're gonna give this just a few minutes to dry, mix up some stain, and we're gonna stain this. Uh, hand me one of those wooden handle t tools in there. And you need to use a piece of wood to do this. This is called burnishing. If I can get, come here and hold that. Pull on that and keep this edge stiff. And we'll probably have to do this with a little bit of stain as well, but I want to get a head start on it. What I'm doing is pushing that leather down and kind of embedding the strands of leather back into itself. And uh, I'll also lay it here on the deal. We'll just go along the edge. When we get the stain on it, it'll, it'll work a lot better. You can see how it's already just kind of coming together. We're gonna to wind up with a nice round edge. It'll be good and hard. This leather won't fray back out once we get the stain on it and start working it. Let us get some stain mixed So up. we're gonna put just a light stain on this. I kind of want this to stay kind of light. Let's dry that. No, no, he just off the top there. I want this stain to get down in everything real good.
we're gonna re-burnish the edges in a minute after I get this to kind of where I want it. I see some tank bibs like this one over here has got the yellow flame in it. How do you accomplish that? Uh, take, you can get yellow dyes, purple dyes, blue dyes, and you would brush them in with a brush or uh, spray them in with an airbrush. Okay, grab me a couple of dry paper towels there. And by the way, I will have brown fingers for a couple of days. Now what we're gonna do is get these edges again. If you want this stuff to stay pliable, like if you're doing a set of saddlebags or something like that, what you want to do is take some linseed oil, buy some linseed oil, and just take that linseed oil and go across the back of this. And that linseed oil will, will dry in the back of that and cover it real good and protect it. Keep it soft. Keep it soft. And then after, after you've sealed it and all that, then you can go to the, uh, you can put some linseed oil on the front of it, won't hurt anything. By putting this stain on the edge and then burnishing it, what that does, once you push those, uh, once you push those fibers of the leather down, they're gonna dry that way and stay that way. And we're probably gonna dry this with a, just kind of pre-dry this with a heat gun in a minute, just to kind of get everything where we're, where it's quicker to seal. You want to grab the heat gun? I'm going to try to wash this stain off my hands real quick. This edge here will be down, rolled down on the bottom side of the tank. Once this is dry, we're gonna put a sealer over the whole thing and it'll get a little glossy. Ryan's missing it today. He hasn't got to, be, got to see me do this either, so. The guy that owns this bike, that RW, Robert Winthrow, he's gonna be uh, 
pleasantly surprised at this. He really liked the idea of me hand tooling a bib that would match his uh, sides of his tank. Like yeah. I think we'll uh, let that stay a little bit warm. I'm laying in a little bit of airbrush. Just enough to give it a little more depth. I'm just going to smoke the edge of the thing so that it'll, uh, By the way, I'm using Createx. Createx uh, airbrush paints, and they they will work as a leather dye. I used them airbrush and leather jackets for years. I think that's looking pretty cool. I'm gonna leave it alone. Let me put some sealer in this airbrush, and we're gonna seal this. Okay, this stuff I'm using now is like a clear coat. What it is, it's a sealer, and it will seal this bib so that the weather doesn't get to it. Oh, that's nice. This stuff will, uh, it'll be a little bit milky. And once we, uh, once it dries, it'll dry clear.
get a lot on the edges to seal those good. Just hit that from way up here with the heat gun for a minute. That'll be good. And as you can see now, we got a nice glossy finish. And we're gonna show it up next to the bike and then on the bike. Scooter's holding that up there. You can see skull on the tank matches the skull on the bib. And we're fixed to install it on the bike and let you guys get a look at it on the bike. Welcome to Blackbird Cycles again. We're finished up with this tank bib. Uh, we've just hand tool leathered this to match the tank sides. Uh, everybody, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I've enjoyed doing some hand tool leather for everybody today. So this should be a pretty cool video. Everybody be sure and watch, like, subscribe, and give us a call at Iron Blackbird Cycles if you need any custom work done.